Dinosaurs thought they had time too. That's just one of the many messages from young activists marching to motivate older generations to actually do something about climate change. Tens of thousands hit the streets around the country in the third and largest school strike this year. The marches have been inspired by 16-year-old climate change activist Greta Thunberg, who was this week at the United Nations delivering a blistering attack. She accused global leaders of stealing her dreams and her childhood with their empty words. We begin our coverage in Auckland, where Nita Blake Person and cameraman Nick Munro joined hundreds of students from South Auckland who wanted the world to know their message. This is our fight as much as it is anyone else's. When Ainganga Lefele Fepulia i Tapua i stood on the steps of Altair Square today, it was the result of months of work by her and her schoolmates. In 20 years time, we want to be able to go back to our homelands. We want to be able to bury our parents in the villages they grew up in. Philly wasn't at the last strike. It fell on the same day as Polyfest, so like many of her classmates, she was busy. But their voices were front and centre today. We are not drowning. Our islands are sinking, but we are not drowning. Philly's day got off to an early start. She helped organise five buses to bring in students from colleges across South Auckland for the march. And what we did is organise these buses so that um, kids on South Side who wanted to come to the strike but didn't have a way to get out here because it's so far were able to come. It may not be within the means of everyone financially to go vegan or buy an electric car. And it's like, how can we um, spark climate action without excluding minority groups? Representing their countries and their cultures, the 200-plus students spent evenings painting signs made from boxes and spreading the word about climate change and its consequences. Climate change work can be really privileged, can be a very elite space sometimes. When you think about um, the norm that people, when they think of a climate activist, do they think of a white person before they think of a brown person or an indigenous person. It's like acknowledging that climate change action has been an indigenous practice for so many years and it's a integral part of Pacifica culture. Um, so that's been really important, trying to connect everyone back to that. A message all too familiar for those marching with her today. Can you tell me about your sign? Um, so this one is Cook Island. I'm Cook Island and this is Enwa Manya. And so it means like to have beautiful land. And so with the sea levels rising and the rubbish polluting the ocean, it's hard to keep our, like, our home clean. Why is it important for you to be here? Because if we don't have our land and if we don't have our future, we have no education. <laughs> we think it's very vital to spread the message that um, climate change is going to basically kill us. We're drawing the line here that we won't let our islands drown. And by saving our islands, we really are saving the world. The group joined thousands of people in Altair Square, which filled to capacity with protesters, with singing, chanting and speeches. Today, we draw the line! Students in life jackets represented the drowning planet. Others had brought a life raft. It's the end of the line. We, we really need help and we need the politicians to do something now. It's time for action. Signs celebrated climate activist Greta Thunberg. They demanded a climate emergency be declared. Some included a few expletives and others warned there's no planet B. Yeah, I'm so proud of our people. Our people came out, we showed out. It's a huge improvement since the past strikes and it's, as you can see, it's incredibly moving as well because these, all these people are here to fight for a future and we're all here united together and it's, it's, it, it's just incredible to see this many people. Thousands of Auckland school children, their parents and grandparents have brought downtown Auckland to a complete standstill as they make their way down Queen Street to the waterfront. Their message is clear and it is very loud. They want urgent action on climate change. As they say, they're fighting for their future, the future of future generations and those Pacific nations which are already feeling the effects of climate change the hardest. Leading the charge down Queen Street, Philly says there can't be any doubt anymore around what needs to be done to save the planet. What is your message to all of these people? This was our dream. Um, yeah. You'll see. You'll see. Meanwhile, tens of thousands rallied in other centres too today. Some of the biggest crowds were in Wellington, where the demonstration was reported to be one of the largest in living memory. Katie Scotcher has more. The 
organisers of today's climate strike estimate 170,000 people hit the streets demanding climate justice. In this time it wasn't just students. Parents, grandparents, professionals and some politicians joined in too. Down south, roughly 9,000 people marched to Dunedin's octagon, chanting for climate justice and the end of fossil fuel exploration. Protesters say it's not just their future they're fighting for. It's hard to think of having a future where I can have a family and kids if it's not going to be safe. Young people really need to uh, voice their concerns because I think the older generation are not doing enough. We feel that we all have to look at the way we live for this carbon culture and we have to do something about it. Um, the best thing is by your own example. I've got four kids. I want them to have the future that I've been able to have. Further up the east coast in Christchurch, thousands filled the city's cathedral square. 15-year-old high school student Nellie Manning says she wants a future that isn't determined by the state of the environment. She has a clear message for political leaders around the country. Please listen to us. It's our future that's on the line here. I don't think our demands are unreasonable. They're doable and not just doable, they're necessary. At the top of the South Island, more than 2,000 gathered at the church steps in central Nelson. Giant paper mache puppets stood head and shoulders above the placards before the procession went down the main street. 73 year old Eileen of the group Climate Grands says it's time to get serious. I'm here today because I really feel we as the adults recognise that fossil fuels are no longer the option and we need to seriously say we're not using them anymore. A crowd of up to 40,000 wended its way through Wellington's central city, one of the day's larger demonstrations and one of the largest in living memory, according to the local council. It was led by a group of young Pacific Islanders called the Pacific Climate Warriors. They were led by Mary Mo'ono Kolio, who was astounded by the turnout. Actually, I'm so amazed by this turnout. It's definitely more than we had last time, but I think because we've made it an intergenerational march and we're fighting for our Pacific people, that that's what's made it for all these people to come out and stand as one, standing in solidarity no matter what island we come from, what we speak, just coming together. Another student, 22-year-old Tagi Fano, says it's time to act now. Just like our chance are saying, we're not drowning, we're definitely fighting. So just here to support that and to let them know, let the government know that, you know, we're not giving up regardless. Yeah. The strikes organisers are demanding the government declares a climate emergency and then implements the appropriate policies. They are also hoping to see cross-party consensus on the zero carbon bill and a promise to end fossil fuel exploration. An open letter setting out those demands with more than 11,000 signatures was delivered to Parliament this afternoon. Motihotaka o te ahi ahi nei, ko Katie Scott Shurahou.